been leaning more towards anti-inflammatory, which is what Dr. Chakras does. So let's go for it. Okay, first we're going to start out with three ripe bananas, and then we're going to go to three tablespoons of almond butter, and then the juice of half a lemon, which is going to be 1.5 teaspoons, because I looked up approximately how much juice you get out of a lemon, and half of it would be about 1.5 teaspoons. Half a cup of coconut flour, four pasteurized raised eggs, or eggs, one teaspoon of baking soda. I grabbed the baking powder, don't make that mistake, <laughs> baking soda. Okay, two tablespoons of grass-fed butter, G, or coconut oil, melted, which I have right here. And, yep, yeah, you can see that, okay. Raw honey or maple syrup, grade B. And a teaspoon of vanilla and a pinch of pink salt. So I think we're ready to go. All you're going to need to do, first of all, start by uh, preheating your oven to 350. I don't like having it make noise in the background, so I'm going to do that afterwards. Grease and line your loaf pin. I don't need to because I've got parchment paper with the grease, but it's awesome to use. Um, and then we're just going to go from there. Okay, combine and mix coconut flour, baking soda, and salt in one bowl. Okay, so we've got half a cup of coconut flour. So what do you all do when you're trying to get healthy? Or maybe you need to do something different because of a food allergy. Who knows? I certainly don't. Um, I knew a while ago that I had to make some changes because I was not looking the way I wanted. Um, and have had some success, a lot of success with it. Um, low carb and anti-inflammatory, which is what I'm doing today. It's really been helpful. Uh, baking soda and salt. Okay, so the baking soda was... One teaspoon. I like to use a bunch of different ones in case one of them gets yucky. I don't know. Do you use a bunch of utensils in yours, in your cooking? Who actually cooks and who's learning? That would be another question. You know, like, are you just trying to figure it out? I've talked to some people who are like blind and they never really cook, I guess due to a lifestyle issue. Um, or maybe they just didn't like it and now they're ready to make a switch. Um, okay, so a pinch of pink salt. So I just got the fine because it mixes in easier. I, I don't tend to like the coarse as much. Um, you may, for what you cook for, you can get them in different grindings. Okay, so we're going to whisk that together. Okay, get it all blended in. I was really surprised that this had coconut flour in it, and I'm used to almond flour. Which, one of the reasons you use almond flour for you line it is it can stain. I'm going to see how that does with the coconut flour, though. It's going to be interesting. Okay. Coconut flour, baking soda, and salt in one bowl. In another bowl, combine the bananas. And we're probably going to have to... Just those three ripe ones, but I'm guessing there's going to be some mashing in them. Who likes peanut butter and banana sandwiches? Believe it or not, almond, almond butter is in this, as I said, and I think it's going to be a great tasting. I like peanut butter and ban peanut butter sandwiches, so it's going to taste pretty good. Um, bananas, almond butter, lemon, eggs. Okay, so the almond butter was three tablespoons. And I think I'm going to mash up those bananas um, what, before I go ahead and mix everything else in. Just because that's what I'm used to. And let's not hide it from everybody. Yes, just mash your bananas. Although I'm sure everybody can figure out what a potato masher is. Um, this one I got from Pinterest Chef. So you can fold it up and put it in a drawer. It's kind of neat. Although... Put it in a drawer, but um, I have that ability to flatten it down and take up a little bit less room in my kitchen. So there's that. Um, almond butter is three tablespoons. So we're just gonna do. And with almond butter, remember the oil tends to separate, so you sometimes have to store it upside down. 
in your pantry um, just to get it to mix. Or you can, you know, do one of those hand mixers, just really get it mixed in good because it does separate and that is normal. And I know that deters a lot of people from using the natural butters, but the hydrogenated oils are not very good for you and that's what they have to use in place of it. So just think about that. Or the, yeah, the ones that stay creamy, just read the ingredients in them. That's all, that's what I'll say. Um, understand that sugar is in a lot of peanut butters or almond butters um, that I've looked at. Sugar is an inflammatory, so you do wanna make sure you don't have that in there. Okay, almond butter, lemon, one and a half teaspoons. We're gonna get there. This is gonna be good. How many of you have to work to keep a good mentality? Like, you know, I just talked about something today with comfort zones and sometimes we stop ourselves because we feel uncomfortable with something that's really good. Like we feel like maybe we shouldn't have it or don't deserve it. So um, we make it uncomfortable by doing something negative just a thought. Love to hear from your, the comments that I get. And plus, I'm trying to be entertaining while I do this. Um, lemon eggs. Okay, there's going to be four eggs. I have been working on weight for most of my life. I've struggled with it. And I've really concentrated on it because there was a point at which I reached one of those comfort levels, I think. I just Comfort as in I gave up. I felt like it just wasn't going to ever be possible. And then I realized it was. And changing the way I ate and getting good nutrition was absolutely a part of it. I have found that with your mental attitude as well as your physical, if you do not have your body in good shape, you're feeling cranky and down and then and then and then. It has an effect on your mental and then all the negative stuff is much easier to come in. So develop a stronghold against those negative things physically and mentally. Um, I do it with these, of course, um, because I had stomach issues. And honestly, guys, I have swallowed what's really good vitamins and, and nutritional supplements. But you know what? They really upset my stomach. And so I avoid all of that with this. And I have to say, it's been wonderful for me. If you want any more information on that, I would be happy to pass it to you. If not, we're going to get on with this recipe. Um, lemon, eggs, butter, which I'm, which is actually coconut oil for our, our purposes. I make it dairy free as well. Um, oh, did I tell you the name of this is grain free banana bread? I suppose I should have said that in the beginning. Okay. Honey or syrup, which was a tablespoon of, there it is. I knew I had it here somewhere. Yeah, I go through all kinds of utensils here. <laughs> My son used to work on a maple farm and he sent this to me and maple is the best for me. However, if you are like one of my friends who is allergic to maple, obviously don't, you know, find an alternative. And she tells me that you have to watch for syrups on the shelf because they tend to have maple in it to flavor them. So just be careful about what you're doing and, you know, read the labels. It's all common sense stuff. And I have every confidence that we all have at least some of that in us. One teaspoon of vanilla. There we go. So who's having fun this week? If you do something fun, tell me what you did in the comments. Okay, this is going to be nice. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, honey syrup, we have got everything. All right, so now it's time to kind of blend all this up. And it doesn't say you need a mixer, though I suppose if you wanted to, you could. I just, I don't care for the noise, personally. I do, however, have a whisk that I do not mind using. Let's see what this does. Okay. Get that all blended up nicely. 
And again, you're going to do this on 350. And it's going to be... <laughs> prep time. Um, 45 minutes is what it looks like. So this is going to take a while. Of course, if you are using one of the um, convection ovens, like I have on the um, countertop, you may want to check that time. And you also may want to put a cover over the top of your bread so it doesn't get too crispy and stays moist. Okay. Uh, add the wet ingredients to dry and blend until combined. Well, here we go. Wet and dry coming together. As you can see, this is a lot more wet than it is dry. So this is probably going to be a very moist bread, which I love in banana bread. My grandmother used to teach me to cook these things, as well as my mom. This is one of my mom's favorite foods, banana bread. She was always making banana bread. Almost then, I almost think you could do this with blueberries, too, but I won't experiment too far off the market here until we figure it out. I would think you could add, I'm going to try this the way it is, but I would even experiment maybe with adding cinnamon to this. In fact, I may next time. Okay, well anyway, this is what it looks like, and now we're just going to slip it into the pan. Da -da -da. Let's see. The only thing it didn't tell me was what size pan, and bread pans, believe it or not, are not all standard, even if they're, they seem to all be the big size or the mini size. Check your sizes, because they really aren't. We'll see. Yeah, I'm glad I used the small one. But, okay. So here we go, and off to the oven. You all have an awesome, awesome day. Please leave me comments, and don't forget to like and share. Thank you.